Hi everybody, this is Sean Farquhar. And uh, first I'd like to thank Adam for writing the questions and in fact for arranging this with the illusionist. I'm a professional magician. I have been uh, for over half my life. In fact, uh, I think I uh, became professional in September of 1984 for my second time. I've been a professional once before as a youth, uh, making a substantial living off of it. And then uh, finished high school, uh, I did a little university, a little college, uh, studied to become a chef. Uh, that didn't work out either. Uh, magic just kept calling me back and so here I am as a, a professional magician. Uh, I've been touring with my wife Lori uh, since uh, 1983, almost 84. Uh, it would have been the fall of 1983 and uh, we've had the opportunity to perform pretty much around the globe. Uh, I spent a long time on cruise ships, <laughs> like today, uh, but uh, I've also had careers as a children's birthday party magician, comedy club magician, uh, shopping centers, uh, trade show magician. I worked as a technical advisor on motion pictures and television with shows like The X Files and The Highlander. And uh, in between all that, I've been creating magic. And uh, in the last few years, I've actually been releasing a few of my products so that, uh, that people could enjoy uh, performing some of the magic that I created. Uh, my most recent accomplishment was the purchase of a, a magic distribution company that they don't actually sell directly to people. I just create magic uh, or sell magic things like the Omni deck by uh, um, Palmer Magic, which is uh, originally a creation of Danny Corm and Jerry Anders. Uh, I even produce Michael Lamar's card on ceiling wax now. So that's pretty much where I'm at at this point in my life. I have a daughter, she's 11 years old, her name is Hannah, and she can do anything she wants to when she grows up as long as she's a magician. Yeah, you see, my father was a magician, my grandfather, my great-grandfather. Well, all amateur magicians. I'm the first to do it professionally. That's a hard question because, well, unless you count all the times my father pulled a coin from my ear or uh, did a card trick for me, all those were really cool. Uh, but they weren't, you know, the first big magic trick. I think the first big magic trick I ever saw was uh, Bob Downey. He was a magician that I uh, saw perform in uh, Europe. Uh, we were uh, stationed in Zweibruck in Germany and he came to do a USO type show uh, for the Armed Forces troops. My father did 27 years in the Armed Forces and uh, uh, played trumpet, did magic, was an uh, air freight mechanic and uh, uh, jack of all trades. Uh, Bob Dowdy did a magic show that night that I still remember bits of. Uh, he produced doves, uh, was uh, dressed very different from anybody else and uh, I wanted to be like him. I wanted to do magic. And my father was kind enough to say that uh, he trained me over the years. Uh, he trained uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Tony Yang, another one by the name of Carl Hemian, Lon Dingwell, John Gilliland, Mandrake the Magician, uh, all had a huge influence on my career. Uh, I know as soon as I started the list I'm going to miss somebody. But those ones that uh, popped to mind right away. Uh, there are more. Uh, and I, I don't mean any disrespect by not thinking. It's just uh, sometimes they don't pop my hands quite. I have to tell you, it's one of the best experiences I've had in my life, and I almost missed it. You see, I kind of turned it down at first because uh, the whole idea of fooling and magic is, uh, well, I don't know. It's not my primary intent. Yeah, it's good to fool, but that's not why I do it. And so when they asked me, I, I kind of hummed and hawed, and then, um, then they told me a name. They told me that the judge, the uh, magic guy who oversaw it all was uh, Johnny Thompson. And if you know me at all, you know that I believe that Johnny Thompson is the greatest magician alive today, and that uh, he's the connection uh, between Malini, uh, you know, and uh, Di Vernon, and the new generation of uh, David Blaine, Chris Angel, and all those other guys. Uh, the opportunity to hang out with uh, Johnny Thompson, even for a minute or two, uh, was well worth the uh, pain, stress that I was going to go through in an attempt to fool Penn and Teller. I mean, who could arrogantly think that they could fool Penn and Teller? Uh, between them, they have combined knowledge that exceeds 100 years. Uh, a teller's knowledge alone on magic and, and Penn's ability to see through the bullcrap is so, you know, well known. Uh, yet, uh, the opportunity to hang out with Johnny Thompson uh, to uh, get a little bit of exposure for my magic, I said yes. And, uh, and then the pressure mounted. Uh, I got to tell you, uh, I picked uh, a trick that I've done in all five FISM competitions that I won an award at. And, uh, I felt very strong and confident with it, uh, but to be honest, I was not really sure that I'd fool them with it. Uh, 
It was a great experience from start to end. They met me at the airport with a limo driver, took me uh, straight to the hotel, from the hotel to this uh, little pub that looked like uh, it was part of Canada. Uh, we filmed the uh, video intro from there uh, back to the room to get a little bit of rest and then straight to the studio where I sat in agreement for hours, hung out with the other acts, made some new friends and, uh, and then filmed. And uh, it was overdone with Gone so quick and yet uh, the anticipation was so much. Uh, um, there were a whole bunch of technical errors in the filming of mine. I was the very first performer on the very first day, uh, yet it didn't air until close to the end. And the technical problems were having like the sliding doors open or microphones not working. And each time they cut and started again, the stress level just kept building up for me. Uh, if you really want an in-depth uh, accounting of it, uh, I wrote a, an article uh, at the request of uh, Magic Scene Magazine. It's a great magazine out of the United Kingdom. Uh, it's filled with really good stuff that you won't see in any of the other magazines. Uh, uh, check it out. It's called Magic Scene. Uh, and uh, it was a recent issue. I'm on the cover way back, uh, but uh, just recently uh, they did one where they talked to uh, three Foolish contestants. And uh, there's a wonderful, uh, basically, diary of uh, the moment I left Charles de Gaulle Airport. I flew to England until I returned back. Uh, uh, all I can say is Penn and Teller are, are phenomenal. The cast, uh, the other crew, unbelievable. Uh, the people from September Films and ITV uh, treated me very special. And I'm very, very pleased that uh, uh, they treated me with respect, uh, as they did so many of the other artists. Uh, it was just a great experience. Well, yeah, I do. In fact, I've made several promises on the internet, and unfortunately I haven't lived up to them. Uh, but I always keep my promises. I'm just a little late on uh, my timing of it. Uh, basically, uh, I promised after the first uh, FISM that I would release it, and then uh, Somebody sort of took it and did it on television special without my permission, and that kind of put me off for a while. And then when I competed in Stockholm and to, took two second prizes, I, I said that I would release it. But to be honest, the, uh, the winds were a little hollow in that uh, I had small little technical errors, just small ones, and, and I knew that I could do better. And so I wanted to hold on till it, and uh, do it one more time in 2009 in Beijing. In Beijing, I won the Grand Prix, and then I was going to release it, and I started filming it. I had a great name for it. I called it Signed, Sealed, Delivered. After all, the card is signed, sealed, and delivered into the hands. Uh, then, uh, to my surprise, uh, somebody else uh, posted a video on YouTube with uh, another explanation, not the same, and I uh, used the same name, and it, it kind of threw me off that I couldn't actually now release mine with that name. And so I had to go back to the drawing board and scrap all the videotape that I put together and, and come up with a new name. And, and then over the course, I had this opportunity to be on the Ellen DeGeneres show. So, well, that held off, you know, my plans to release it. And then the Penn and Tellers fool us. And uh, now there's nothing really holding me back but time. Uh, and, and the fact that I'm afraid that uh, once I release it on DVD, that it'll be torrented in five minutes and, and that everybody will be doing it. And that that's not my plan. My plan was to limit the release of it, make sure that the people that do it are people that will perform it and will, will do it justice. Uh, my father was great. He used to say that, you know, knowing a secret is nothing, doing a secret, you know, and performing a trick is just a small part. It's in actually understanding uh, why it, it works, uh, the psychology, the full presentation. And you can only get that when you actually sit and talk to the person that created something. Um, and so it's my plan to release it. Um, I just don't know how yet. Uh, I filmed it again and uh, thrown it out and now moved on to uh, the third version of it. Um, I have over uh, half a dozen variations. I had ten but I've released a couple of them over time so it just keeps narrowing down and soon I'll have it. At least uh, I hope so. Uh, but yes, I do plan to release it in very limited quantities uh, and uh, in a very unique way. Uh, I say that with all vagueness because I'm still vague on how it's going to happen. Uh, it's no hype. I really do want to release it. I just want to do it right. Creativity is such a hard question, and you've asked me, you know, how do I create the magic, and uh, it's very nice that you compliment and think that my magic is not only entertaining, fun to watch, but uh, baffling to both laymen and magicians. Um, I think it's because a lot of the stuff you've seen that I've released are magic tricks that are close up, and I'm basically a stage magician. I spent the first 25 years of my career doing stage magic and only recently switched over to sleight of hand close-up style magic and so I bring a lot of uh, stuff from the stage side over to the close-up side and um, I believe in effect over method and so a lot of times I'll use whatever it takes to, to get the solution and I may not be as adapt on all the techniques and so I create some of my own. Um, 
I'm also a voracious reader now, and I love to research and find more magic. And so a close-up is a fairly new field for me, so I'm just devouring everything I can find. And I'm so thrilled that I know so many people in the magic world that I can uh, collaborate with, ask questions of, uh, to help to uh, create my magic. Uh, most of my magic comes from sleep deprivation. Uh, if you're a Facebook fan, you already know, or a friend, uh, you know that uh, I, I very seldom sleep. Uh, sleep is for the week. I'll get that, you know, when I'm dead. Um, I spend most of my time uh, working on projects. Uh, I'm ADHD and dyslexic, mildly, so uh, I, I'm working on five or six projects at the same time. I don't see things the way most people do, and, and all those things actually contribute uh, to my creativity. Um, I do use a few tricks. Uh, you can read Daryl Fiske's book uh, from his phenomenal trilogy. It's called The Trick Brain. It'll help you with uh, ways to be more creative. There's also a book called uh, Whack to the Side of the Head, and uh, it, it's outstanding. Um, uh, these things help me. Um, I also try never to be negative. I always stay positive when I'm looking at something, and I keep notebooks. I, I write everything down. If I see a picture of something, I cut it out of a magazine. If I see an image, I'll, I'll photograph it with my iPhone, uh, and I just keep piling them all into these notebooks uh, because the, they, uh, if, if there's something cool, uh, they inspire me, and maybe some magic will be created out of it. Uh, also, sometimes I'll have an effect, and I don't have a solution for it, but I know in time, over the years, uh, maybe that solution will come. I have some effects that have been on the board seven years. Some I've actually produced two and three times and uh, not done correctly yet, uh, but by persevering, keeping going, uh, I get them. A lot of the magic that you've seen, things like torn to pieces, are a result of mistakes. Me not being able to do what I originally intended to do, uh, but the results were so much better than what my original purpose was. And so I never look at anything negatively. I try to stay positive and uh, always uh, gather from as many sources as possible. I'm a very linear person, though. Uh, uh, magic is my life. Uh, I don't follow sports. I, I, I don't do mechanics. I, I, have, I have nothing besides magic. That, that's my whole world. And so uh, sometimes I have to try to step outside of the world of magic to uh, find things. And uh, uh, my most recent, you know, magic are things that I've been doing for a decade. It's not new stuff. It's, it's old stuff. Um, but I try to step out of my comfort zone. Uh, here on board this cruise ship, I'm doing several new pieces that I've only performed uh, for my family and friends uh, to allow me the opportunity to learn how real audiences experience it. And from that, the creativity will uh, hopefully uh, blossom over into something new. Uh, if you want to do your own magic tricks, create your own stuff, uh, just start today and uh, never be afraid of failure. I started performing pretty young. Uh, my first public performance uh, was in my backyard uh, where I charged a nickel ahead for kids to come see me. Uh, my first uh, paid performance where somebody else paid me uh, to perform for a group uh, was my church. Okay, I really didn't get paid. Uh, I got milk and cookies. Uh, and a nice chicken dinner at Reverend uh, uh, Price's uh, uh, rectory. Uh, I was just a kid in uh, Summerside PEI, uh, St. Mary's Church. And uh, I'll always remember it because I did uh, uh, Magic Trick with the Gospel Message. I did uh, Professor Nightmare. And uh, it was, I don't know, it was cool. Uh, the congregation actually clapped, which is pretty unheard of uh, in the Anglican Church. Uh, but uh, it was a cool day. In fact, just recently uh, I uh, reconnected with Reverend Price and did a uh, fundraiser show for uh, people with brain injuries. Uh, uh, it's a, an organization that uh, he chairs and uh, it was a really great evening. And what a great opportunity to say thank you to a man who encouraged me uh, uh, to perform for audiences. Um, where do I perform most now? Uh, corporate functions, uh, cruise ships still. I've really trimmed back on the amount of ships I'm on, but uh, I still go out. And uh, corporate functions, I do a lot of uh, shows for uh, uh, enrichment programs, uh, company appreciation for employees or uh, uh, shareholders, that sort of thing. I do a lot of banks. Uh, as the economy was starting to go down, I looked to see who had the most to make, and I realized that uh, banks generally profit in a time like this. And so I uh, work for a number of the top banks in the world. Uh, that uh, keeps me going. And I'm even doing a fair amount of magic conventions. The last three years since winning FISM, uh, I was in great demand. Uh, not a lot in the United States, a few, uh, but mainly in Asia and Europe. And uh, it's been an amazing experience. Uh, uh, when I left ships, I told my wife I wanted just a few years to travel. I said, Laura, I want to 
go hang out with people who are like-minded magicians and and it's been a great experience uh, at times coming to a close and uh, I'll go back to performing pretty much exclusively for uh, uh, lay people but uh, I've really enjoyed the time uh, my favorite venue to perform in uh, I kind of like parlor style magic I love to do close-up and I like to do stage I love comedy and I like to mix them together uh, although I have a two-hour illusion show called secrets and uh, I love close-up magic. Uh, the in-between is the best. Uh, Some place where I can do a little bit of both. It's my dream that uh, one day I have a little 150-seat theater someplace, maybe even only 75-seat, uh, where I can entertain audiences who come to me instead of me spending my life on uh, planes and in hotels. I tell a lot of people uh, the show doesn't cost anything. You're paying me to stay in hotels, be away from my family, and uh, fly on planes for sometimes up to 32 hours just to get to a gig. Uh, I've flown as much as 32 hours uh, to do an hour's worth of performance. It's, it's crazy. Uh, but I wouldn't give it up for anything. I love magic, and uh, I'm blessed that I'm allowed to do this. Yeah, I practice. Uh, not as much as I used to. My professional touring schedule uh, really cuts into the practice. Uh, but what I do, uh, pretty much every opportunity I get on a plane, in a hotel, uh, before shows. Uh, I'm always working on new magic, and I'm a magic addict, so I'm buying everything that's out there uh, just to see what other people have and uh, see what their ideas you know, are, and if maybe there's a technique or, or some clever thing that could be used for one of the ideas that I'm stumped on at the time. As for books, yeah, there's go-to books. Uh, Tommy Wonders books, not so much for the effects, although they're brilliant, but more for the essays. Uh, Maximum Entertainment by Ken Weber uh, to inspire me to be a better performer. Uh, the Tarbell Course of Magic, uh, unbelievable uh, source of magic. Um, these are just a few of the books. Uh, in the business side, uh, Joel Bauer's book, Hustle, Hustle. It was my Bible when I first started. Um, yeah, uh, what are my favorite books? I think I just named them in that. Uh, Tommy Wonders, uh, Books of Wonder, uh, the Tarbell Course, uh, Robert Gilby's Card College. Um, I'd love to say, you know, expert at the card table, but I don't understand it. I've tried many times, and I know there are guys who totally get it. I'm just not one of those guys. Um, uh, my first book ever, I think, was the Henry Hayes Amateur Magician Handbook, and I turn back to that once in a while just to remember how inspired I was to uh, see all these secrets locked in a book. And my second book was the Dunninger's uh, Encyclopedia of Magic. It was this giant black book uh, that I bought in some department store that was discounted for like, you know, uh, $4 or something. And it was filled with everything from close up to grand illusion. And uh, most of it was uh, impractical uh, solutions, uh, but still cool to look at. Um, uh, Raw Road to Card Magic. It's the first book I recommend to anybody who wants to uh, study cards. I think it's uh, really clever the way it works. Uh, that's where I'd start expert card techniques, uh, following that one up. Uh, a lot more difficult, but uh, well worth the struggle to get through it. Um, I have a huge library. I'm very fortunate. Uh, people like Ed Silverwhite and John Gill and Alon Dingwell, they all uh, contributed to make my library what it is. Competitions are a unique thing onto their own. I've heard the positives and the negatives, and anybody who knows me knows that I, I have a competitive edge. Uh, I think I've won somewhere in the neighborhood of like 45 international awards, uh, and I didn't do them uh, to win awards. I did them for promotion. At first, it was um, a way to find out where I stood in the world of magic. Uh, I won my first award in uh, 1984 at Pacific Coast Association of Magicians Convention and I, I prize it as my first trophy and uh, it allowed me the confidence to know uh, that I could once again return to the world of magic professionally. I had a career as a young child and uh, uh, then did all the school and the work and everything and uh, uh, the jobs, the education and then uh, I went to this Pacific Coast Association Magicians Convention and, uh, and I won this award. And there were some amazing magicians. If you want to do your research, you'll see some of the names that uh, I competed against there. Uh, some of, well, my favorite magicians now. Um, it, 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 that one was uh, a confidence builder. Uh, after that, uh, the next ones uh, were promotional tools. Um, and they're also great ways to make friends. I'm a procrastinator. Uh, Adam will tell you it took a very long time to get this video to him. Um, unless given a direct deadline, uh, I can be very slow. 
uh, that would explain the signed card and sealed deck in many ways. Uh, I, I need um, I need to be told when ha something has to be done. That's it's just a, a character flaw I have. Uh, by setting goals, uh, by entering competitions, it told me when I need to be ready, and that if I wasn't ready, well then I, I'd look bad, uh, and um, and it drove me to be better. Uh, it also gained me some of my best friends. Uh, most of the people I count as friends are people that I was in competitions against. Not all of them did I beat. Many of them beat me, and that's very cool too. Um, specifically because they weren't really beating me, and I was never really beating them. Uh, I've never gone into a contest thinking that uh, I was up against the other competitors. I've always believed I'm up against myself to do the best job I can do on that very given day, because that's really all a contest is. Um, yeah, you can say, oh, I won this, and that's my award forever. Uh, but the fact of the matter really is, it was on that given day, with that given panel of judges, that they felt that your performance was better when you win. End of story. Uh, anybody who believes their own publicity is crazy. Uh, I've used all my awards as promotional tools to uh, get me more work, get me more money, uh, gain me more recognition, more publicity, uh, to enable me to uh, uh, do the thing I love, magic. Uh, feed my family, uh, buy my home. Uh, I call my house Chateau Farc, where the car, the house that cards built, uh, and it's true. Uh, all based on promotion, publicity, uh, and winning awards. Um, my website uh, named MagicChampion.com. Uh, that's because nobody could spell Sean and Farquhar. Uh, no other reason than it uh, allowed me the opportunity to uh, be seen easier and to be remembered uh, more readily. I think competitions are good, and I think everybody should do them. Uh, my experiences have been phenomenal. Uh, I've had a few, you know, that uh, I don't think were uh, the best handled contests uh, or poorly judged, and uh, um, life goes on. Uh, as soon as you allow yourself to be judged by someone else, you have to accept what they decide, regardless of uh, how it's decided. Uh, end of story. Um, I've been on the receiving end and the giving end now. I've uh, been judged in competitions from the PCAM to the IBM to the SAM, all, all the way to FISM. And uh, although I may not have agreed with all the results at every one of them, uh, as soon as you allow yourself to go into the competition, uh, you have to accept them. Uh, now I've uh, judged competitions. I've judged uh, PCAM. I've judged IBM. I've judged SAM. And now I've judged FISM. And all of them have different criteria, criteria different ways to look at things. Uh, if you're going to compete, uh, understand the monster you're getting into. Understand how it works. Um, it's the same as going on America's Got Talent. You're being judged by somebody else by their own criteria. And don't uh, just build an act and take it to the contest. Look at the contest, figure out how the contest works, and build your act to it. Uh, some competitions uh, give you points just for costumes, others for the closing effect, uh, some for mystery value or comedic value. You have to know uh, what the judges are looking for uh, so that when you bring your act to the competition, uh, you're going to be judged according to their criteria. Uh, uh, if you really want to go into competition, uh, I would recommend uh, reading the essays that Michael Amar wrote for Magical Arts Journal. I believe they're also in his um, uh, book, uh, The Complete Works of Michael Amar, which I believe is like the Cups and Balls one. I'm not sure which one it's in. I, I have his books, all of them. Uh, and in one of them, uh, you'll see a whole essay about magic competitions. Uh, it's also uh, available at the Magical Arts Journal. Uh, there were a series of magazines put up by Adam Fleischer and uh, Michael Lamar, and uh, there's some great stuff in there. I'll go back and take a look. Uh, but uh, that's my basic feeling on contests. Uh, they're great uh, if you go at them for the right reason. Uh, if you go at them for the wrong reason, for ego, to think that you're beating other people, well, uh, you're going to feel very, very, very hollow. Uh, it, it doesn't work that way. Um, when done right, it's a powerful tool, uh, both psychologically and marketing, uh, and uh, I wish you all the best with it. I'm going to wrap this up. I just want to say thank you uh, to you uh, for taking the time to uh, watch this entire uh, interview. Uh, once again, I want to thank Adam for the great questions, and uh, if you ever see me somewhere, uh, come up and say hi. I love to meet new people, love to hang out, uh, especially with magicians. Uh, all the best. Keep well, keep busy, most of all, be happy.